As always, uh, what you should do as a new user is check regularly whether things are working the way you expect. So it's always good practice to just form test simulations and see the response of your model with the current status. Uh, I already adjusted the, uh, the timing parameters. This is going to be a rapidly rotating spin. We want to check, well, is there already contact, for instance, between the spin and the ground? There won't be, but we just want to see what's going on. And we want to see how and whether the spin is rotating about the right axis. So if we run the model now, what we will see is for 0.5 seconds and 200 steps, we indeed see the spin rotating. We could even do it with a smaller end time and see it falling a bit slower. But definitely we see a rotation of the part and we see that it's falling down and that it's indeed not touching the ground yet. So if we go there, uh, no grid. You should see the same thing. There you go. Okay, we verified that we have the initial conditions correct. Um, again, the sequence of working is not really that important. We could also define the contact first and then define the initial velocities. We can even set the initial velocities to zero now just to see other aspects of the dynamics. The thing to do now is to create the contact between the spheres of our spin and the ground plane. Uh, for that, we will use the sphere to plane contact which is stored in the contact library so this is going to be our top contact let's rename it directly top contact it's going to be a contact between a sphere and a plane okay the sphere being the ellipsoid on the top called TS the plane naturally being the ground plane we can pick it directly from the model there you go or we can actually select it or guess it there's three ways of going there. Basically what you have to do is get the name in here that is used by the plane. Okay, we can visualize it with a certain force. Uh, normal force uh, is typically uh, the preference for that. My preference for that is being using the impact method. You have to, you have to define a stiffness, you have to define a force exponent, uh, a damping and a penetration depth. Um, there's a lot of uh, things to be said about this method here, but basically uh, it means that stiffness and exponent define the stiffness force and the damping is a viscous damping uh, with a value of 10 which is switching on over a penetration depth of 0.1 millimeters in these settings. So uh, mainly this is the thing I would like to change. It's not really a big thing but it gives you an idea of reasonable parameters. And we need friction. We need friction in the plane of the contact so let's use Coulomb friction and we want to have static and dynamic friction coefficient equal to 0.2. The two remaining parameters here defining the velocities at which the peak values of these frictions occur. We might want to change them later but let's keep them to the default right now and see what's happening. Okay. It should be in there now. Icons. There we go. You have to set the icons on to see things of course. Uh, we can actually copy this top contact and use it, use its copy for the bottom contact, contact, copy. There you go. Now you should see two contacts, indeed, top contact and bottom contact. Rename the uh, copy and adjust its inputs so that indeed you are making contact between the bottom sphere and the ground surface. Ready.